Hi, my name is Willem Frankenhuis. I am a researcher at the Behavioral Science Institute of Radboud University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And I will be presenting our paper, Hidden Talents in Harsh Conditions, a pre-registered study of memory and reasoning about social dominance. Now, over 700 million people worldwide live in poverty. And people in poverty struggle to meet their basic needs, have less control over their environment, and might confront more violence. And in developmental research, there's been a lot of focus on the deficits that people might develop when they grow up with such psychosocial stress that's associated with poverty. Now, in our research, we take a different approach. We focus on hidden talents. And so hidden talents are skills and abilities that people develop in response to adversity. And we call these talents hidden because they might not be measured by the standard instruments that are used in psychological research. Now, we think it's really key to get insight into these hidden talents because they can help us provide a more well-rounded understanding of the skill sets that people develop in harsh environments. A better view of these hidden talents can help to reduce self-fulfilling prophecies and stigma that's associated with growing up in harsh conditions. And they can help us create suitable learning and work environments for people who have grown up with adversity. And so in this particular paper, we looked at memory and reasoning about social dominance. And we thought, we hypothesized that people who grow up with a lot of violence might become particularly good at memory and reasoning about social dominance. Now, we tested this hypothesis in 199 participants, 99 people from a community sample in the Netherlands, and 100 students of Radboud University, and the sample included both genders. And so the way we measured social dominance, memory, and reasoning was using what's called a transitive inference task. And transitive inference is the ability to derive a relation between items that have not been compared before. So you might know that A is greater than B and B is greater than C and so on, but you've never seen B and D compared before in this example. However, if you assume that the relationships here are linear, you can infer that B is greater than D because you know B is greater than C and that C is greater than D. And so we use this task to see whether people could better memorize and reason about social dominance if they had grown up with more exposure to and involvement in violence. And so the way that the social hierarchy looked in our study was as follows, but people wouldn't actually see the full social hierarchy. They would see pairs of individuals, so-called dyads. So for instance, a participant would see this, and then they would see these other dyads as well. And we would have a learning phase where participants would try to memorize these dyads, and some people could do that rather quickly, and others took longer. And then we asked them about two individuals that they had not seen compared before, who would be socially dominant. And they could infer this based on the relationships that they had seen and also memorized. Now, we also had a control condition, or maybe better to say a comparison condition, which was also social in nature, but it was not about social dominance. It was about chronological age. So one individual would be older than another. And eventually we asked people about this new pair of individuals, you know, who is older? Now, what the results look like is a bit complicated to summarize in a few statements, but I can summarize it as follows. On the reasoning questions, we found that exposure to and involvement in violence did not predict performance. We did find that the student population did a bit better at the inference question than the community sample. For the memory task, we found that individual exposures to violence and involvement in violence had complex effects and those are summarized in this graph and the message of this graph is that the childhood exposure to an involvement in violence resulted in worse memory for social dominance relationships as well as age relationships but the current exposure to violence that individuals had and the current involvement in violence that individuals were engaged in, those actually predicted intact or even enhanced memory performance. And so that particular result is consistent with the hidden talents approach, but the other results are more consistent with the deficit model, with an impairment approach. And so we have results that are only partially supporting the ideas we set out to test. So summarizing, 
The hidden talents approach is innovative. It's a useful way to study vulnerable populations. And ultimately, we hope to develop a more well-rounded views of the skills and abilities that people develop alongside their deficits potentially. And we want to leverage this full profile in designing learning environments and work environments for people who are affected by adversity. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you will enjoy reading the paper.